Good evening, everybody. So tonight I wanted to run a little bit of an experiment. So I noticed when my inverters were in grid bypass mode, and in this specific instance, they were triggered by the low voltage setting. I believe it is setting number, setting number 12. So setting number 12, setting the voltage point back to utility source when selecting SBU in program 01. So I had set the voltage to, I don't know, 46 volts maybe. Maybe it was 45 volts, I don't remember. Either way, doesn't matter. The inverters had reached that low voltage, so they switched to grid mode. And I noticed overnight, there was still a draw on the batteries. All right, so looking here at solar resistant, I, I went back to the 21st of November. And you can see that we were in grid bypass mode. And I scroll down to battery power and I just tap at various times throughout the evening and you can see there's a 65 watt draw from the batteries overnight. And you can see it here later in the evening of the 21st, 65, 66 watts. So the only thing that I can figure out that that draw could be is the inverters. If nothing else, the fans in the inverters. But that 65 watt draw overnight adds up. If you set your low voltage to switch to utility or your low state of charge to switch to utility at the very bottom of your battery capacity, you know, let's say 5%, 2% state of charge, whatever that ends up breaking down to be voltage-wise, if you set it that low and it switches at 6 o'clock at night, no solar, solar's done for the day, you just switched over to grid bypass and you're at 5% state of charge, you're going to have 65 watts drawn from the batteries all night long which is just gonna drop your battery even further. And then you need to hope and pray that the next day, when the sun comes out, it's a sunny day and not a cloudy day. Because you're not gonna get that power back unless it's a sunny day. When I saw that draw, I was kind of annoyed that when it's in grid bypass mode, that it just didn't automatically run the inverters from the grid as well. It's running everything else from the grid, so why can't it do that? I don't know why it can't. I mean, it probably all runs off of DC power, which comes from the battery, but why can't, when in grid bypass mode, why can't it just compensate for that? So my initial steps for testing this was to just put my power supply on the inverters and do a, you can see, a, a 1.2 amp uh, supply. So if we jump over to Solar Assistant real quick, we can see right now I have a zero watt draw off my battery. And if I come over to my power supply and turn off my power supply, now we look at Solar Assistant and there's a 63, 65 watt draw off the battery. It's gotta be the inverters. And I come over and I turn this back on. And in solar resistant, it zeroes out. I know these numbers aren't the most accurate, but it's close enough. So I've had this power supply running for the past few days just trying to offset that 65 watt and that basically offsets the load for the inverters the entire time and that's great you know it's it's not drawn from the batteries that's that's nice but it's it's a manual thing that i have to do or i have to always leave this connected all the time and then i had a little epiphany last night I was walking outside to let out one of the horses and 
It was probably, I don't know, 11 o'clock at night. Walked outside, nice brisk night, looked up at the stars, and then had a thought. So these inverters have built-in chargers. And right now, I have the charger on the inverter set to solar only. But I know there's other options, solar and utility. And I thought, I wonder if I could program one of these chargers on here to be low enough to only supply the power needed to offset the power coming from the batteries for the inverters running. So I ran, let out, let the horse out, came back inside, ran downstairs, grabbed the book, and looked at option 16, charger source priority. So currently my charger source priority is only solar. Solar energy will be the only charger source no matter utility is available or not. So you can look above that, there's another option, solar and utility. Solar energy and utility will charge the battery at the same time. Well, I really don't want that because I would really only want the charging to be done from utility if no solar is available. So if we flip back a page, there's another option, solar first. Solar energy will charge the battery as the first priority. Utility will charge the battery only when solar is not available. So I thought, great! I wonder if I could try that out. But then I had to stop and think, well, how low can the charging go? And that's option 11. Maximum utility charging. Setting range is two amps and then 10 amps and then from 10 amps to 120 amps with an increment of 10 amps a piece. Well, two amps is a little more than I wanted, but it would more than cover the power draw from the batteries for these inverters. And I know there's certain options on these inverters when you're in parallel mode, when you make a change on one inverter, it'll automatically sync to the other inverter. But I believe the charging is specified per inverter. So you can have one inverter do the charging and not the other. So I want to try setting one inverter down to solar first with a two amp utility charge to cover the 65 watt draw and prevent it from coming from the battery. And that actual two amp, it's actually going to give it a little more, a, a little trickle charge, I guess you could say into the batteries because it's a little more than the 65 watts needed, but still, you're talking at 52 volts, you're talking 125 watts maybe. So I mean, it would really cover the idle consumption when the inverters are actually doing inverting because I believe that's what, 70 watts per inverter? 65 watt, maybe it's a full 65 watts per inverter, 60, 65 watts, I don't remember. But let's try it out. Let's see if we can offset that that battery cost so that we can use our more of our capacity of our batteries before we switch back to the grid. Because I was actually worried that if I had it set to a lower state of charge or a lower voltage before it switched back to grid and then if i had several days of little to no sun that could drop my batteries even more to where i could get a low voltage disconnect on my batteries because there's this constant 65 watt draw so let's see if we can use one of the inverters built-in chargers to cover that draw when solar is not available all right, so we'll put solar assistant and the battery draw so that you can see it. And then we'll come over here. We're gonna turn off the power supply. So in solar assistant, you can see now we have our draw again. And I'm gonna come over here to inverter two. 
no real reason one versus two, just two's easier to get to. Put my book right here so I can see. So I wanna go to option 16. Actually, let's go to my charge, my maximum charge volt uh, amperage first, which is option 11. All right, so I currently have it set to 50 amps. So let's go down to two amps. Now we will go to option 16. You can see right now it's 0S0, which stands for only sold. So we're gonna change this to CS0, which is charger source priority for solar first. And now you can see on the display, we have charging coming from utility. We've got the charging light flashing here. Utility AC to DC going down to the battery. And if you notice in solar assistant, Solar Assistant now says that we are charging the battery with anywhere from 40 to 50 watts. And that's potentially gonna change a little bit when the voltage on the packs increase a little bit. But we are now covering that cost. So I don't have to worry about when I'm in grid mode the batteries still draining even though I'm in grid mode. And I mentioned earlier there were a few options that remain separate between inverters when you're in split phase mode. So let's just look at this again real quick. So option 11 is 2 amps and option 16 is CS0 and this is inverter 2. We will come over to inverter one. And you can see right here, there's no icons for any charging. Option 11 is 50 amps on this inverter and zero S zero on this one. So I'm glad to see that that actually does work. I, I hadn't actually attempted it before I started recording, so I wanted to take you along with me and see if we could actually make it work. It's good to see that there's kind of a workaround aside from the bench power supply, which it works. I can get finer tune with the bench power supply than I can with the two amp setting in the charger, but the utility charger turns off when solar is available. So as I was editing this video trying to get it ready to release, I had gone through my footage again and I had talked about what I thought was going to be a catch with this whole change. And over the past few days I realized that it was actually not going to be an issue. So I originally thought that regardless of being in grid mode or in battery mode, I was gonna have this two amp charge happening when the sun went down, but that's not the case. So if we look at the manual, we're gonna see here, option 16, charger source priority uh, for solar first. There's a little note right up here and that says, if this inverter charger is working in line, standby, or fault mode, the charger source can be programmed as below. Well, that means in grid mode, or in standby, not inverting at all, or in some kind of a fault mode. That's the only time that solar first is gonna be able to work. If we turn the page over and look at the other options here, you can see in uh, zero S zero only solar it says right down here 
If this inverter charger is working in battery mode, only solar energy can charge the battery. Solar energy will charge the battery if it's available and sufficient. So as soon as you switch back from grid mode to battery mode, that two amp trickle charge is gonna stop, which is awesome because I really didn't want it charging from the grid when it's supposed to be in battery mode. I wanted the grid to be completely disconnected and only there as a standby option. I think for the time being, especially that I'm in winter time, I am probably just gonna leave the charger enabled on the inverter. And that lets me remote control that charging ability. If I use the power supply, the only way I can turn it on and off is by physically coming and turning it on and off. Or I get a Wi-Fi smart outlet and I can do that, but I'm not going to do that. But if I let the inverters do the work, I can use Solar Assistant to remotely manage whether that charger is turned on or off. When I end up getting more solar, that will kind of help offset even on the cloudiest days, my power draw, then I'll probably just turn off the charger altogether and let it only charge from solar. But for now, I figured out a little workaround to be able to let the inverters cover the cost from the grid of their own power draw which is nice. I'm glad it worked out the way I was hoping. I'm glad that epiphany moment that I had last night worked out. And if it can help somebody else, great. I'm almost wondering if the reason there is a two amp option for your, your charging ability, I wonder if that has anything to do with this exact reason. Maybe? Well, thanks for coming along with me tonight. I hope y'all stay safe, stay warm, and we'll catch up with y'all later.